So this is Quiritaro. It's one of the most visited tourist cities in Mexico for Mexicans. I was thinking and reflecting on this, like I've known you for five years and this is like the, <laughs> the very first time, first met, time yeah. you and I are meeting in person. Well, that yellow building there, that was our story. I'm actually headed to Querétaro today. Is that how to say it correctly? Tom? I think so. I think so. I've actually never heard anybody say that before. Querétaro. Querétaro. I am. Uh, that's just how I say it. It's probably it's probably wrong. So. <laughs> well, you've lived here. You've been living here now for what more than a year already? Yeah, and so I kind of like understand a little bit like how to say certain like all the letters, you know. Yeah. And so I'm just guessing. I'm, I'm guessing that that's how you say it. But I'm sure if Dahlia said it, that she, she'd say it completely differently. Gotcha. So Querétaro. Gotcha. We'll just go with that. Querétaro. So I'm headed to Querétaro today. I'm going to be meeting up with my friend Ray Blakeney. Um, he is an entrepreneur who's been based here in, in Mexico, I think, for more than a decade. Cool. I'll have to double check with him on when he's been here. But I'm pretty sure that he's been here for more than a decade. So it's going to be the first time um, actually meeting Ray because I've known Ray for like five years okay. and we've never met in person before. So this will be fun to actually go out and meet him in person. And... Fuck. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Just, just when I'm about to pass You're like guy. flooring it, man. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Tom drives a Mustang here, which is why uh, you may have heard the engine rev up a little bit there. <laughs> But, um, so you've never met him before? Never met Ray in person before. And so I'm going to go there, get a little taste of what his life is like. Um, he'll show me around and we'll just see what's going on there in, uh, in his city Love it. of Querétaro. I was thinking and reflecting on this like I've known you for five years and this is like the, <laughs> the very first, time, first met, yeah. time you and I are meeting in person. Being digital nomads is not that weird. I spoke at TBEX, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember a few months ago. And there's this girl there called Nora Dunn. I was on her, uh, she interviewed me for her podcast, like not podcast, her website, like an interview, right? Like six years ago and we had been kind of, we hit it off and we just chatted on and off for all these yeah. years just like you. First yeah. time we met <laughs> was over there. But now we've seen each other like two or three times. Yeah. Um, was, I don't remember. What, what was the second time? What was the second time I saw Nora? But I just, I, like a month later, I saw her somewhere else. So I was just, okay. Oh, she came to Mexico City. Then I saw her on TVX. Then I saw her uh, somewhere else to just pure coincidence. We were in the same place, same time. <laughs> so three times in like three months after not having seen each other for six years. Yeah. So, and now I'm pseudo coaching her to grow her business. Okay. So. So this is... Kiritaro. Kiritaro. We're doing a little bit of a back road to get in there, but it's been a few years since I've come this way. Yeah, this is very, uh, very quaint. Yeah, that's, that's why it's a nice, you have all the modern. But it feels very, like this feels more of what I would expect Mexico this to is be like. like Mexico. Yeah. Whereas when walking around um, Mexico City, that feels at times like more European, like almost more Spanish. Well, you, the history of um, uh, Reforma, you know, that street, it, when they built it, it was the longest road yeah. in all of North America, I believe, right? Uh -huh. It was based off the Champs-Élysées. Like they saw, somebody went and saw the uh -huh. Champs-Élysées and they designed that street to look like it. <laughs> I yeah. mean, you know, so absolutely. Yeah. It looks very much like, you know, a European city. 
Yeah. This city wasn't, you know, this was a Spanish city. This yes. is one of the reasons we put the school here. You want real Mexican, quote unquote, real Mexican culture? Come here. Uh -huh. Like this is, you know, it's not Cancun the beach. Yeah. This is real Mexicans. Yeah. This is where most Mexicans live. Yeah. This is how most Mexicans live. Like a lot of the traditions that they have here go back between, they're mixed between indigenous and Mexican, but they're very authentic. Yeah. It's one of the most visited tourist cities in Mexico for Mexicans uh -huh. because there's so much history here. The Constitution was signed here, the, oh, really? the Mexican National Anthem. It was the capital of Mexico for a while under the fr Emperor Maximilian, the French Emperor. Uh -huh. You'll see the plazas, they actually look more French because they have manicured trees, which is not a Mexican. You know, most Mexican plazas are open spaces where you just meet. Uh -huh. Well, look in here, there's coffee places, there's some restaurants, yeah. all that kind of stuff. There's cafes. Yeah. The city was built around art because that's how they evangelized people. So what they did is they taught them how to paint and taught them how to sing. Yeah. But what do you think they taught them how to paint and what do you think they taught them how to sing? <laughs> there's another plaza that's a little farther down. If we have time, we can go walk there. I didn't get it on Sundays, all the painters come out. You can just watch a painting in the plaza. Oh, just wow. thinking, and they're selling their work and they're painting. <laughs> So how many plazas are there here? Ah, uh, like a dozen. Oh, wow. We're not gonna go to all of them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. But we'll go to the main ones. But. We just don't have those in the States, man. Like, no, exactly. But here people... Squares, plazas, gathering places Like at people. 1 o'clock in the morning, this place is packed with people just hanging out. Kids yeah. playing soccer. I mean, it's not like... Downtown and most cities in the U.S. at night are, you know, dead. Outside of, like, the clubs, right? Yeah. But here... Sometimes that makes me wonder. It's so easy for us to be at our throats these days because uh -huh. there's—I mean, people live in in suburbs and, and you hang out with people who agree with you. You in places where people not, look you like you. You don't run into people. Yeah. You don't run into other people of differing points of views. Yeah, exactly. Or even get to see your neighbors really. Uh huh. If you don't want to, yeah, you can. In the U.S., the condo I had I lived there three years. Other than saying hi to my neighbors, I had no idea who they are. Yeah. Right now. When we lived downtown, like we knew all our neighbors. Here. Yeah, here. We, and even in where we live right now, we live in a little gated community of like four houses. Everybody knows each other. Yeah. I mean, our kids play together. I'm like, you know. So. When was the last time you were here? It's been about six months since I came downtown. Oh, okay. But also, it, it's been the transition of COVID, right? Because everything closed down. But in the last six months, like people are just opening up places again. Oh, so. okay. So a lot of this during COVID was just. Yeah, these were empty. Quiet. Yeah, yeah now they're shut all. Shut down. Yep, now they're all open again. How old are these buildings? Three, four hundred years old, depending on where. This is the oldest part of the city. Uh -huh. because there's a church over on the left. We can go and see it on the way back. Oh, that okay. was the, the church. The city was founded there. Um, there's a myth that the Spanish conquistador Santiago uh -huh. uh, kind of came, and he was about to go, you know, have a battle with the indigenous people on this hill. Yeah. And right before the battle started, the skies parted, a burning cross appeared in the sky, and the apostle Santiago. St. James, I think in English, okay. kind of appeared in the sky and said, told the, the indigenous people were so in awe that they all just gave up without a fight. Oh, wow. And they converted to become Catholics, and this, this whole area was conquered. Take a bet who, who wrote that story. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> what is this building? It's another church. Oh, another one. Yeah. There are also tons of churches. Remember, this, was, this city was sounded to evangelize the indigenous. So there are churches on every corner. Mm -hmm. I joke that here, you know, my wife and I have the worst reflexes. If somebody started shooting at us, we'd look up because we, you know, we're just so used to hearing explosions all the time. Yeah. Because there are fireworks and festivals like every day downtown. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in Catholicism, Christianity, it's still a big part of the culture here, like in terms of people uh, attending mass and. How would I put it? Um, yes. If you ask every Mexican, they'll say they're Catholic. But then. If you ask the last time they went to church, they're like, uh, maybe like Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> yeah, like, maybe. Christmas, yeah. Easter, the Christmas big holidays. Christmas a few years ago, yeah. like, yeah. Um, I joke, I'm like, Filipinos would consider Mexicans atheists, right? I mean, you know, I have some very religious people in that side of my family. And like, yes. Compared to Same them, me. yeah, they probably wouldn't count these people as Catholic. That bus was, like, very... It, it was pretty nice. That like isn't it, even first class. That isn't first class? No, that's not first class. If you want to, if you want to take a look at the time, when you go back tonight, look for something called ETN, Splurge. It's maybe like 15 bucks. Um, <laughs> that's first class. They look like business class seats, like yeah. two per row. Yeah. That's first class. That was economy. That's economy? That's economy. Mexico. I was just pretty wowed by the fact that there was a, there's bathrooms and yeah. then the seats were climbed back Everybody's like, no, Mexico chicken buses. I'm like, that's a Mexican chicken bus. Oh, okay. I mean, you know, there are chicken buses if you go to like the small villages and stuff like that, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what most Mexicans use to get around the country. When I tell people, you can just take a bus up to Canada, I'm like, a bus? Because they think like Americans like taking Greyhound. I'm like, it's not that bad. <laughs> like literally you sit there, they'll do everything for you, read a book. 
yeah. watch a movie if you speak Spanish because all the movies there I think are oh, all, sure the, all the yeah. many yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure they're all in Spanish yeah um, and they censor out all the bloody parts so it's kind of funny because half the movies in there are like violent movies oh yeah so like half the movie's missing <laughs> they're like about to chop somebody's head off and it just flashes the big scene you're like w what just happened that's the thing that I've missed about traveling is just kind of being in this place where Oh, these mundane things are uh, very interesting to me. And I'm always, noticing them, you know. I've been here for 14 years, so a lot of things that I noticed 14 years ago you're noticing, but I've been, you know, I'm not going to say jaded, but I'm at the point where I'm like, oh, you know. It's just normal. To yeah, me. yeah. I'm like, I've lived here longer than I've lived in the U.S. officially as of either this year or last year. Wow. I've lived in Mexico longer than I've lived in the United States. Do you still feel more American than you no, do Mexican? I never Mexican? felt American. You don't? I've lived in Turkey you... longer than I've lived in the U.S. That's right. I'm like, I've lived... I am 42, and I lived in the U.S. 12 years, and I've lived outside of the U.S. 30 years. Okay. I sound American. I can fake being American. Yeah. But I'm not a very good American. What would you classify yourself if, if you did have to... They call us third culture kids. Mm, okay. And somebody wrote a book about it like 15, 20 years ago, some psychologist. Yeah. Generally, it's, a parent, it's somebody who... It's a kid whose parents come from two cultures, and they grow up in the third one. Uh-huh. Uh, which is becoming much more common these days why people are traveling overseas, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, let's say, you know, let's say you're American, you marry somebody who's European, but you guys decide to live in Mexico. Your uh -huh. kids are third culture kids. Uh-huh. Because, you know, their parents come from two different cultures and they grew up in a third one. Yeah. And they're not really from any of them, right? Yeah. But we are our own demographic, more or less, right now, right? Because, I mean, I'm, there are not many of us, but there are a few tens of thousands of us around the place, right? It's not like mm -hmm. we're not that rare. So yeah. that's how I define myself. If, I, if somebody asks me on immigration, I am either American or Mexican or Filipino, just, depending on which passport we just get into the country faster. Just depending on which passport you decide exactly. to use at yeah, the moment. If I'm in Cuba, I'm not American, right? When I went to Cuba, no, 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 I was Filipino. Why did you end up settling here in the first place? The Peace Corps offices are here. Ah. Um, and so this is where they bring everybody to Mexico. Uh -huh. Their idea is they wanted a city to bring them in Mexico light. This is the third wealthiest city in Mexico. Uh -huh. It's the safest city in Mexico, so I'm like, look, if you're going to be... Bring some young, for, young American kids in. Let's bring them here, right? So they can't get into too much trouble. Yeah. In most other countries, they put them in the capital city. So Mexico City. Yeah. But this is where they come. And I liked it. I was here three months. This is where I kind of started learning Spanish. And, and after I finished the Peace Corps, my wife and I did market research as to where to put our school. Uh -huh. And we knew there was only one Spanish school in the city, a whole city of two million people. Uh -huh. And they, they were really bad because, you know, they were... My wife worked there in the Peace Corps hired them, right? Yeah. So we're like, hey, let's just come here and open a competitor. Right. And we did, and we right. blew them out of the water within six months. That yellow building there, that was our school. Which one? The, the next one over, the yellow? The oh, okay. first one, not the second. Oh, that was okay. the Querétaro Language School, that my first business my wife and I ever started. Oh, yeah, that's That we right. sold, yeah. We started in a smaller building, and then expanded to that one after about a year. Uh -huh. One of the things we like is, you know, we live here, in, Especially when you live downtown, I feel like living in a small town doesn't, you know, it doesn't change. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I go to, we, we got our food from Costco and, you know, <laughs> all the rest of it. So, so where's the Costco? Yeah, How far it's is a it? 10 minute drive from here. There's do, three Costcos. And do they have anything? I mean, is there, is like the food court menu different than the food? Um, the, you want the jumbo hot dogs and all the rest of it? Is it the got. same price? <laughs> hot dog in the States? Like, is it like I don't know. I've never actually bought a, yeah, I've never actually bought a Costco hot dog. Just see him on the head. Yeah. So you said people are moving from Mexico City to here. Tons. And it's it's people who are probably at a stage in life where they want to settle down, build a build Most a family. Mexicans want to settle down to build a family. Yeah. I mean, it's not like the American way you want to travel. Or like you and I, even in the U.S., most people don't want to leave their city. Yeah. Here, this is close enough that they could visit their city and their family in Mexico City on the weekends without any problem. It's like you. You're coming up for the day. It's not that big a deal, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's also outside enough, the safety is better, all the rest. Mexico City is Mexico City. It's like yeah. any 20, city of 20 million people in the world, there's gonna be petty crime, some violent crime. Yeah. Most people, most thing tourists have to ever worry about is probably pickpockets. Yeah. Somebody charging you too much for taxi. Has there been like any unusual, maybe like an unusual or notable like spike in people moving here over the last few years with like no, COVID or? The thing is, well, especially since we live downtown, we wouldn't notice it. Yeah. Because downtown stayed the same. Ah, okay. But we went and visited another, a lot of my wife's family lives here. Her cousin might come out a year or two ago. They bought a new house in a place called 
Kenneth Otto Sur. I'm like, oh, okay. uh -huh. we've never been around there. We drove 30 minutes to the south of the city, full of houses. I'm like, we'd never been there before. I'm like, I had no idea this part of the city even existed yeah. while we were there. So that's where they're expanding out to, right? It's urban sprawl yeah. outward. But if you live down here, you won't notice it because we're not allowed to change the houses. Mm. So it looks exactly the same now as it did 15 years ago mm -hmm. with different restaurants. I guess I'm just wondering if, like, you know how there are people like myself or my friend or all these expats who are now moving in, who are now, like, remote. They have this this capability to do the remote work life that they didn't get to have before COVID. If that's, like, pushing people... Not get it, though, because most people have never heard of it. Ah. And I told you, for the right kind, if you're a... Digital nomads are usually looking for where the action is. Let's yeah. be honest, they're singles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not really for them. If you're yeah. a digital nomad with a family who's looking for like a nice little place that's yeah. safe, that's, again, we have direct flights from here to the U Dallas, Houston, Miami, like from the city. Like we can fly directly to the US yeah. multiple times a day. You want safe, you want good schools, you want all that, this is a great place to live. But most digital nomads are not at that stage in their lives, right? So exactly. this is not. This what? is boring to a lot of digital yeah. nomads. But then what about like pushing out like the people who are there, like you were talking about the people who are there from Mexico City and now they're moving here, they're from there originally. It's, this isn't that much cheaper than Mexico City, right? Okay. So it's not like they're rich people moving in and pushing out the poor. Yeah. I'm sure there's a little bit of that. Um, but generally it's middle class Mexico moving in here to middle class houses that people, the construction companies are just building like wildfire. Uh -huh. And as soon as they build a house, they rent it out or they sell it Got to it. the people moving in from Mexico City. Got so. it. Okay. So there you go, that used to be one of the oldest working clocks in Latin America. Oh, that right there. It may not be on, this is a dancing time in Michael Douglas, so you can play this and you can play this and stuff. And at night it has laser shows. So how long is this? 1.74 kilometers. Ah, okay. I did walking through it, I did. How big would you say the the uh, expat community is or the foreign community here in Kedatara? 40 or 50,000 people. Yeah. I mean, there are some, but when you have 2 million people in the city, 40 or 50,000 you drop in the bucket. Yeah. In San Miguel, it's 130,000 people and there are 40 or 50,000 Americans. Yeah, that's half the population. Yeah. That makes a huge cultural difference here. And they're not all Americans. Yeah. A lot of Japanese, a lot of Koreans. As I said, Samsung's here, Hyundai's here. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. So there are a lot of Koreans, especially where I live. Uh -huh. A lot of Korean restaurants are up there and a lot of Japanese restaurants. Yeah. And the menus are all Korean. Like, they don't even put it in Spanish. Like, <laughs> we went in there, we go to one of them, and we, my wife, we like it because we like, you know, we like Korean food. And we joke that I'm like, you know, honey, you're the only Mexican in this restaurant. It's like the owner's Korean. You're the because I'm Asian. Every, you're the only non Asian in this restaurant right now. And we're in the middle of Mexico. And it's like full of all these Korean, you know, obviously coming out of work for their, you still have the logos from Samsung on them. And they're kind of, we get in there and drinking their drinks. Yeah. We go in there and eat. It's just like, I'm Asian. <laughs> you're, you're the only non Asian here. You're the odd <laughs> one out. So, yeah. It's pretty cool. The storage center here is on the left. And actually the house I, that we own, and I lived here for tw about 12 years in this area, so I know it very well. You don't you don't live here? Not right now, no. We, but you're we just have renting it? Yeah, we have some foreigners, uh, a couple from Chicago have been renting it for is the last Is this just like an Airbnb, or is no, this... No, they've been uh, long-term rental for the last two years. Oh, uh, okay. And then hopefully for another year as well. So, But this is where, you know, I called home. I know this area inside out. This uh -huh. is for 10 years, this was the street. Yeah, so this is the historic center, and we'll see actually my, uh, our street is the next street on the left, and you'll actually glance at our house real quick. Which one now? And you'll see if we can. So this is this corner right here. So you see that house with the balcony with all the trees facing the street over down there? Oh yeah. That's our house. Oh wow. So how much did you buy that place? So we got it for a steal. We knew the owner. We were renting it for dorms for our school. And then he got cancer. And he survived. He kind of we went through chemotherapy and he survived. Uh -huh. And at the end of it, he was an older gentleman already, kind of very well-to-do professional. And he had multiple houses. And he's like, look, I don't want my kids to fight over this house when I die. Mm -hmm. It's much easier for them, you know, if I had money and we, they just split the money between. You know, that's pretty easy. Yeah. Easy thing to do. And so he said, okay, how about we get the house appraised? I have no idea what it's worth. It was my grandmother's house, right? I mean, I kind of grew up here. And so we went and got an appraised, and we went to an appraiser, and the appraiser came back and said, like, it's $30,000. We're like, what? <laughs> 30000 Yeah, and we're like, you know, it was livable on day one. I mean, it needed some stuff that we needed to fix, but and it was the, quite livable. But with some of the, like, the cost of fixing things up, 
We put fifty thousand dollars in it, okay. and then it became worth three hundred thousand dollars. That right there with the garden up top. With the garden, that's, that's us. Yeah. Uh, okay. What are the property values like now here in Kiritara? Like, have has has there been an uptick like there has in the U.S. with prices? I have no idea, really. It's not something that we follow, uh -huh. and also it's not as well regulated here. Mm. Like, you know, I can't go on to Zillow and see what our property value is. It's worth as much as what somebody's willing to pay for it, <laughs> and that's yeah. I could put a million dollars on there. You know, so they, there's no way they can check comparables because there's no comparable list. Uh huh. Um, and how many bedrooms is this house? This is three bedrooms. Well, you see the challenge with the comparables. The house next to ours, Angela and her husband owns it, and it's, she's from the U.S., but lived here 50 years, retired. Uh huh. Probably a million dollar house. Yeah. This house is abandoned. It's abandoned? Yeah. So if you went and looked at comparables on Zillow, you'd see an abandoned home and a million dollar home right next to it. Yeah. How much is the house in between cost? And to buy a house here, I mean, it's not like the, the buying process in the U.S. where you go out and apply for a loan or anything. No, like generally, I mean, they have cash. mortgages, but it's like 8 to 12%, and you can't get it if you're a foreigner. Oh, uh, okay. So, there are some companies that offer mortgages, you know, American mortgages here in Mexico, but usually when the interest rate goes way up, they go bankrupt, and right now with the interest rate going up, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're all going bankrupt. Yeah. That's what happened the last time. What would you say the monthly expenses would be on average for... Depends on how you live. Yeah. 1500 bucks, you could live here pretty comfortably. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And downtown is probably one of the more expensive places to live, right? Because yeah. this is where everybody wants to live. If you wanted to take the benefit of this, you know that place we looked at the aqueduct where you look down there? Yeah. That's a middle upper class neighborhood. Yeah. You could rent a place there for like 500 bucks, a whole house with a garden. Oh, wow. And then you can walk here in five, 10 minutes. And, but, you know, as I said, you'll see there's wealth in this country. I mean, in the city. Okay, so it's the day after I am back here in Kiritara. Not back in Kiritara, excuse me. It is the day after my visit to Kiritara. I am back in Mexico City. I was very tired last night. Wasn't really able to record this closing thoughts section of the video. Just because my brain was so fried. I just couldn't really think. Wasn't thinking very clearly. So now that I've got a night of rest, under my belt here, I can give you some of these closing impressions of what it was like to be in Kiritaro. Kiritaro, great place, lots of history out there in, in the city related to this country as a whole and how it became an independent country. Things I didn't know about Mexican history that Ray detailed. And again, a great place to be if you are a nomad or you are location independent and just want to be based somewhere that is just low key. Okay, so with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the video. I wanna thank y'all for watching. Check out the next one and I'll see you on the other side.